It's a great honor to uh, welcome you this morning to this uh, significant launch of uh, Google's Waza Online project. And as you will know, this launch takes place at a time where government across uh, all spheres is making a conscious effort to align, and to rather realign programs uh, to the imperatives of the new growth path in order to contribute significantly towards the creation of jobs in the economy in line with our five job drivers. It's widely held that small businesses are an incredibly important part of a vibrant economy, if not the most important part. Now, one of the things that you do when you speak about the internet and you speak about small business and you actually speak to an entrepreneur is you sometimes run into a whole bunch of questions. And the questions tend to be around things like, I'm the managing director, the CFO, the marketing director of my own firm. I simply don't have the time. I'm busy doing the books, thank you very much. Now, one of the things I'd like to do is to share with you some of the experiences that uh, so, some small businesses have had and the successes they've had in terms of embracing what's possible with the internet. We're always talking about it that we need to put our stuff uh, on the web as well so that people can have access to the band. And the benefit of having our business online, I think, is all about marketing ourselves, making sure that we reach uh, the target that we set for ourselves. Taking the business online was like, well, we wanted the guitar to be a kind of a, a visible instrument all over the world because we knew that without a website then just a few people will know about the guitar. We get a lot of, a number of orders, let's say about three or five per month. Some of those people, they have never been to Cape Town. They have never seen the live guitar at all. Some are bought by, you know, managers. The Bruce Springsteen has got a guitar. Chris Rea got the guitar, but they never bought them here. We took the Mushroom Factory online mainly to get exposure, um, creating credibility. What it does do is it, it, it answers a lot of people's queries without them having to deal with us directly. I think without the internet we would have had to use more traditional methods of, of marketing ourselves, which would have been more costly in terms of, of, of targeting and the numbers of people that we'd like to. It's opened up a whole range of new markets for us, and particularly from like a geographical area point of view, it's got people all over the country excited about the product. We do get a lot of inquiries off the website. If you aren't found online, it's almost like your business doesn't exist. I mean, it's a, it's a no-brainer, you must. We're very aware as to how powerful the web can be to grow your community of supporters, people interested in what we do. I want a situation where anybody from anywhere in the world can literally have a virtual tour of Streetwise. Anybody who's willing to grow their business online, it's never too late. Jump on the wagon. Get yourself a web page if you don't already have one. The first thing to do if you want to create a website using Warza Online is to open up your favorite web browser, either on your own computer, or an internet cafe, or a friend's computer, pretty much anywhere, and navigate to www.warzaonline.co.za. As Luke mentioned uh, in his speech, more and more people are going, getting onto the internet using their mobile phones. Um, and this is a trend which is not going to diminish. This is going to accelerate further and further. So your business must be available when people are searching from their phones. And typically that is also a very complicated, difficult technical process to go through. With Warsaw Online, every new website is mobile. If you pull out your phones, and hopefully your data connection will work, if you pull out your phones and go to that address right now, you'll see something like this. Zanzi Pottery CC, a list of our products. The ability to contact you from your phone. And if it's on your phone, on your real phone, you can click there and phone the business. Or alternatively, I'm going to 
show you some of the relevant findings from our current SME survey. We're halfway through the process of interviewing 2,000 SME decision makers in South Africa. And the focus of this year's survey is SMEs on the web. And we're measuring the impact of having a website on SMEs. What we try to do in SME survey is not be too leading in our questions. We don't say, did your website help to make you profitable? We do it more indirectly. We ask how profitable are you? And then we look at whether you have a website. And that gives us a correlation between having a website and being profitable or being competitive and a number of other measures that we use as well. Firstly, older SMEs were far more likely to have a website. And one of the known facts about SMEs is that the older you are, the more profitable you are likely to be and the more revenue you are likely to generate. And it seems having a website is a strong element of that. So on behalf of my fellow colleagues at, at, at Vodacom, um, the executives that couldn't be here, there were many tactical reasons of why we couldn't do it. Some of them technical, some of them because there's lots of, lots of projects. Um, but when we looked at the strategic linkages of this project, not just for us as Vodacom and the fact that we are a mobile company, and I think you can work out the obvious business benefits to us that it's such a part of doing something and giving back to the growth of this country, the growth of SMEs, the growth of technology, making it easier for people to do things. And I know this term has been coined many times before and started off in the early 1990s. We're doing something real, and maybe not for the first time, but something that in my books is absolutely real towards bridging the digital divide. And I think that for me, we must never lose sight of the importance and the need for that. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much again, and to Google, thank you for making us a part of this. Um, the Human Resource Development Council is so delighted to be a headline partner in this important initiative to get all South Africans' businesses online. And we continue to provide our full support to everything that has started today. Our council <coughs> is a multi-stakeholder body, which is chaired by the Deputy President, Kalima Mutlante which is made up of 50 members, including 14 national cabinet ministers, trade unionists, senior business leaders, civil society, and academia. We see the development and support of South Africa's entrepreneurs as imperative to creating jobs and bringing prosperity for all South Africans. In fact, the production of successful entrepreneurs must be one of the critical outcomes <coughs> we should measure ourselves by. I must say today it is a special day because the mid 20th century ushered in tools, computer, internet that redefined the way society communicated. But the introduction of these tools also presented new opportunities which saw the ICT institutions such as Google been born. But innovation and creativity characterize the information age. In this day and age, the ICT sector has become a very critical part of modern economies. But the development of the ICT sector has improved global communication and reduced the cost of communication or doing communication. <coughs> I'm glad Vodacom is part of this initiative, and I'm sure we'll go a long way to make sure that you can we uh, assist us and make sure that we go much. This is just the first step. We must then talk about the second, third, until then we reach the stage where we are sure that our small businesses are assisted right through. To me, you don't stay small forever. They need to graduate mm -hmm. and move on so that then, because if you are a small business for five or ten years, I, there should be something wrong. <laughs> you can't be small business for five, ten years. That's a decade. So you must have moved somewhere. And I'm glad the partnership also, I'll, I'll, I think the MNC uh, will be able to work much more closer with us, the Department of Trade and Industry, so that we can take this forward as a step that we start to make sure that our partnership can work. And talk to a lot of our products and services from GTI, and we believe many people don't know. And we can then reach out to them with this. It is not really difficult, I've seen it happening in front of my eyes here, quicker, better, simpler and not asking a lot of unnecessary things, even if you are BBC like myself, born before computers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are not like our kids and our grandchildren. 
<laughs> uh, computer literally much faster, whatever, you struggle a bit, whatever. Sometimes if you do the SMS, I said, oh, you don't do that. I must teach you, you must know where Z is, you must not look at Z. You must know where Z is and all that. But to me, I think this is one good example, because even if you are in a rural area, if you can be able to have some of the broadband and other, uh, and other related <coughs> networks to make sure that people can access this even using their cell phones now, because even in rural areas, people can afford a cell phone, you can then access this and make sure that do you register online and you are then a good business person if you are peri urban, rural, etc. But thank you very much. I hope that we take this forward and work together.